Uh, hi, my name is Alicia Rogers. I'm a postdoc in the Phillips lab at USC, and today I'll be telling you all about how RNAi pathways repress reprogramming of C. elegans germ cells during heat stress. Um, so we already have had an introduction to risk complexes, but our lab studies several different aspects of RNA and desilencing, or RNAi, which is an evolutionarily conserved pathway that is employed to regulate endogenous and exogenous gene expression. And the integral components of RNAi pathways are the RNA-induced silencing complexes, or RISC, which are made up of argonaut protein family members and their associated small RNAs. Uh, RISC-mediated regulation is responsible for maintaining homeostasis, appropriate gene expression, silencing of foreign genetic elements, and ultimately plays key roles in development and fertility. And what I appreciate about risk complexes are that they are modular in fashion, where the small RNA guide provides the complementarity and specificity for targets, while the argonaut protein provides the effector function. Risk complexes can regulate targets in one of two ways. In classical RNAi, cytoplasmic argonauts are guided to complementary targets by small RNAs, and then the argonauts use their slicer activity to cleave target transcripts. RNAi can also occur in the nucleus, termed nuclear RNAi, to transcriptionally regulate mRNAs at the chromatin level by directing the establishment of the repressive chromatin mark H3K9-methyl-3 at target loci. And both classical and nuclear RNAi occurs in somatic cells and in germ cells. In the germ cells, many of the proteins associated with RNAi, including multiple argonaut proteins, localized to paranuclear membraneless organelles, such as the P granule shown here, and the adjacent mutator focus. An important part of these RNAi pathways is an amplification step, which in C. elegans takes place in the mutator focus, where the uh, small RNAs are taken to the mutator complex with mRNAs um, to be replicated by an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase in order to increase the strength of heritable RNAi-mediated silencing signals. The mutator complex is centered around this protein, MUT16, which acts as a scaffold for all the components needed for this amplification step to occur. The amplified small RNAs are then loaded into different argonaut proteins to ultimately either transcriptionally or post-transcriptionally silence target transcripts. Without this mutator complex mediated amplification step, RNAi mediated silencing is ineffective and loss of a functional MUT16 protein leads to an RNAi defective phenotype. Um, in addition, other RNAi pathway factors as well as MU16 exhibits a temperature-sensitive sterility phenotype when grown at elevated temperatures. However, each RNAi factor reaches sterility at different generations after a progressive generational decline in brood size, which is termed a mortal germline phenotype. Um, for example here, you can see that uh, when we look at the total number of eggs laid for individual hermaphrodites, uh, Wild-type hermaphrodites lay between 200 and 300 eggs at permissive or 20 degrees. And when raised at elevated temperature, which here we use 25 degrees, while there is a slight decrease in the total brood size, this level of uh, progeny is maintained for several generations at elevated temperature. In comparison, when you look at MUT16 mutants, which have a roughly 50% reduction in total progeny laid, uh, even at permissive temperature compared to wild type animals, you see a dramatic uh, decrease in fertility um, to basically sterility in a single generation once raised at elevated temperature. In comparison, HERD1 mutants, which are mutant for a nuclear argonaut that's required for nuclear germline RNAi, um, you see that after culturing at elevated temperature, they reach sterility at between three and five generations. Um, so the observed mortal germline phenotypes implicates the nuclear germline RNAi pathway and playing an important role in maintaining the integrity and fitness of the germline from one generation to the next under heat stress. However, how heat stress triggers sterility in RNAi mutants and what dictates the generation at which the different RNAi mutants reach sterility remains an open question in the field. So I wanted to ask how stress triggers temperature sensitive transgenerational sterility in RNAi mutants. Um, and to study this, I wanted to take advantage of the MUT16 PK710 mutant because it had been previously reported to reach sterility in a single generation at elevated temperatures. And much of our work 
for this study uses a multi-generational temperature shift assay. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through this. Uh, so animals, either wild type or mute 16 mutants, are synchronized as L1s and then are cultured at permissive temperature or 20 degrees for a single generation here. And then we transfer L1 larvae to either non-permissive temperature, uh, in our case 25 degrees, or to permissive temperature for subsequent generations. Um, and we confirmed before continuing with the rest of our work that mute 16 mutants reached sterility uh, after a single generation at elevated temperatures. But so what we wanted to determine next was whether the observed temperature sensitive sterility in mute 16 mutants is due to a maternal or paternal effect of mute 16. To assess this, we performed a multi-generational crossing schema in which we assayed the brood sizes of 20 individual hermaphrodites following mating. All crosses were performed and maintained at elevated temperature, and the total number of eggs laid was counted for each mated hermaphrodite. Um, so to assess whether the sterility of mute 16 mutant hermaphrodites cultured at 25 degrees, so these are homozygous mute 16 hermaphrodites that typically would be sterile because they've been cultured at 25 degrees for a single generation, we mated them to um, mute 16 males that were raised at permissive temperature. We found that mating of these mute 16 hermaphrodites with males that were cultured at permissive temperature restored the fertility of them uh, back to a level similar to mute 16 hermaphrodites cultured at permissive temperature, indicating that there's a paternal component of the mute 16 temperature sterile, uh, sensitive fertility defect that manifests itself within a single generation at elevated temperature and is rescuable by mating with seemingly normal sperm. Next, to assess whether there was a maternal component to the temperature sensitive sterility of mute 16 mutants, we mated individual F1s from our cross one. Um, which again, these are homozygous mute 16 mutant hermaphrodites that have been cultured at 25 degrees. And we crossed them either to homozygous mute 16 males that were cultured at 20 degrees, which we indicate here as cross 2A, or we mated them to wild type males that were uh, cultured at 20 degrees, which here we indicate as cross 2B. And we uh, observed a significant reduction in total number of eggs laid by our F1 mute 16 homozygous hermaphrodites raised at 25 degrees compared to their parental generation. And this was independent of whether the F1 mute 16 hermaphrodites were mated with mute 16 males in cross 2A or with wild type males in cross 2B. And this indicated that there's a maternal fertility defect associated with multiple generations at elevated temperature uh, for mute 16 mutants. Furthermore, when we mated F2 mute 16 mutant hermaphrodites um, that are homozygous here to mute 16 males that were raised at permissive temperature, which we indicate as cross 3A, and when we mated the heterozygous mute 16 uh, hermaphrodites that are F2s cross to wild type uh, males at permissive temperature, which here we indicate as cross 3B, neither of the F2 hermaphrodite, hermaphrodite genotypes laid any eggs after mating, as seen here. And we think that the sterility of the cross 3B, uh, in which the heterozygote hermaphrodites were crossed to wild type animals, is especially revealing because it indicates that the sterility of the mute 16 heterozygote hermaphrodites is actually a maternal effect resulting from its homozygous mute 16 mutant mother and grandmothers being raised at restrictive temperatures. Next, we wanted to assess the morphology of the mute 16 mutant female germline after two to three generations at elevated temperature. So to do this, we imaged DAPI staying germlines of the unmated sister hermaphrodites used in each of our crosses. The germlines of unmated cross one and crosses two A and B did not have significant morphological defects. If anything, they perhaps are a little bit smaller than your healthy wild type germline. But interestingly, the germlines of the mute 16 mutant hermaphrodites used in cross three A and three B, so these are the F2s that are either homozygous in three A or the F2s that are heterozygous in three B, but neither of which were able to produce eggs after mating exhibited a range of morphological defects. And these defects were observed in all animals and ranged from shrunken and disordered germlines, as you see here in the left panels, 
um, to completely collapse germlines, which you see here in the right panel with this asterisk indicating the vulva and uh, the outline of both non-extended arms of the germlines. Um, so together, this data indicates that the maternal effect of MUTE16 uh, that manifests itself after two to three generations at elevated temperature is accompanied by morphological defects in the hermaphroditic germline. Uh, PIGL1 expression, which is a, or PIGL1, which is a core component of the pea granule, is restricted to the germline, so it's often used to evaluate the identity of germline versus somatic tissue. And since our heat stress MUTE16 mutants exhibited temperature sensitive sterility coupled with morphological germline defects, we wanted to determine whether the integrity of pea granules was disrupted in our heat stress MUTE16 mutants. So to do this, we evaluated the expression of a PIGL1 GFP3X flag in the germline of wild type and MUTE16 mutant animals cultured at 20 and 25 degrees. As expected, wild type animals cultured at 20 and 25 degrees express PIGL1 GFP here in normal looking paranuclear pea granules. In addition, we observed normal paranuclear pea granules in our MUTE16 mutants cultured at 20 degrees. However, strikingly, um, the PIGL1 GFP expression in MUTE16 mutants cultured at elevated temperatures was severely disrupted. Some germline nuclei were flanked by large aggregates of PIGL1 GFP expression, as seen here, um, while other nuclei within the same germline completely lacked paranuclear P granules, indicating that indeed our P granule integrity is disrupted in our heat stressed MUT16 mutants. It remained unclear what triggered induction of sterility, so we sought to identify mRNA expression changes that occur during heat stress that may contribute to the reproductive changes in temperature sensitive small RNA pathway mutants. And so to do this, we generated mRNA seq libraries from synchronized adult wild type and MUTE16 mutants cultured at 20 and 25 degrees for a single generation. First, we compared mRNA libraries from wild type animals cultured at 20 degrees to libraries of wild type animals cultured at 25 degrees to identify change, uh, changes in gene expression um, that are triggered by heat stress. So this analysis revealed that spermatogenesis enriched genes, as shown here, are significantly upregulated in wild type animals during heat stress. We also observed the upregulation of spermatogenesis enriched genes in mute 16 mutants cultured at 25 degrees, suggesting that increased expression of spermatogenesis associated transcripts is a common uh, result amongst heat stressed animals. Incidence of wild type males in C. elegans cultured at permissive temperature is incredibly low. However, the incidence in males increases when cultured at non-permissive temperature. In addition, mute 16 mutants have been observed to have increased incidences of males independent of temperature. So we wanted to determine whether the observed enrichment of spermatogenesis factors amongst the heat induced genes could be attributed to an increased incidence in males in our prepared mRNA libraries. So we performed qPCR using RNA extracted from isolated hermaphrodites of our wild type and mute 16 animals grown at 20 and 25 degrees. And we probed for highly upregulated spermatogenesis factors from our list of heat induced genes. And what we found and strikingly is that these spermatogenesis factors are upregulated um, in our mRNA seq libraries, as well as in qPCR of the adult hermaphrodites of our heat stress wild type and mute 16 mutants compared to their permissive temperature uh, counterparts. And this indicated that the increase in expression of spermatogenesis genes cannot be attributed to an increased incidence of males in our mRNA seq samples. Um, but next, we wanted to determine whether or not this increase in spermatogenesis gene expression was occurring in the germline tissue or in the somatic tissue since our mRNA libraries were prepped from whole animals. So to do this, we performed qPCR using RNA extracted from dissected hermaphroditic germlines of wild type and these 16 mutants grown at 20 and 25 degrees. And these samples contain only the distal arms of the gonads so as to exclude oocytes and sperm. And we observed a significant increase in expression of the tested spermatogenesis factors in the germlines of our heat stressed animals indicating that indeed spermatogenesis factors are being misregulated within the germline of the heat-stressed hermaphrodites. 
So to further understand the changes in expression associated with the fertility defects in these 16 mutants at elevated temperature, we use differential expression analysis to identify the genes that are significantly differentially expressed exclusively in mute 16 mutants cultured at 25 degrees. In general, our bioinformatic analysis revealed that soma enriched genes, um, such as muscle and neuronal enriched genes, were significantly upregulated in mute 16 mutants cultured at 25 degrees compared to both mute 16 mutants cultured at 20 degrees and wild type animals cultured at 20 or 25 degrees. Um, while oogenesis and gender neutral germline enriched genes are actually downregulated here, indicated as germline enriched genes. Um, and so this indicated to us that heat stress is reducing the expression of gonad specific genes and increasing the expression of soma specific genes within our heat stress mute 16 animals. When we look specifically at the genes that are significantly upregulated exclusively in these mute 16 mutants that have been experiencing heat stress, um, and this excludes any genes we determined to be significantly differentially expressed due to heat stress or to the mute 16 mutation alone, our analysis revealed that oogenesis and gender neutral gonad specific genes are significantly depleted from this list, while soma enriched genes such as the muscle and neuronal specific genes and spermatogenesis enriched genes are enriched in the list of genes upregulated exclusively in heat stress mute 16 mutants. Um, interestingly, the majority of these upregulated genes are actually not known targets of any small RNA pathway. Um, so we wanted to determine whether genes upregulated in mute 16 mutants experiencing heat stress could be explained by changes in small RNA populations. And to do this, we generated um, and bioinformatically compared small RNA libraries from the same RNA samples that our mRNA-seq libraries were generated from. And then compared the total number of small RNAs mapping um, to the genes that are in our upregulated list of genes in mute 16 mutants at 25 degrees. Overall, there was not a significant change, as you can see here, in the total number of small RNA levels mapping to these upregulated genes in heat stress mute 16 mutants, indicating that the change in transcript level of these genes is not directly regulated by changes in small RNAs at elevated temperature. One proposed cause of sterility in heat stress RNAi defective mutants is actually an increase uh, transposition of transposal elements that would result in accumulation of DNA damage and increased expression of transposons. So we assessed the differential expression of annotated transposable elements in the C. elegans genome and found the expression of these transposon mRNAs are not significantly changed in mute 16 mutants cultured at 25 degrees compared to mute 16 mutants cultured at 20 degrees or compared to our wild type animals. So this suggests that Accumulation of DNA damage caused by increased transposon mobility in RNA mutants is not the underlying cause of the heat stress induced sterility of 16 mutants. We next sought to address whether the changes in expression that we observed in heat stress mute 16 mutants were a common feature of small RNA pathway mutants raised at elevated temperature. And so to do this, we utilized previously published mRNA seq libraries from adult wild type and HERD1 mutant strains cultured at 15 degrees for three generations and 23 degrees for six generations. So remember, at elevated temperature, HERD1 mutants reach sterility between three and five generations if cultured at 25 degrees. If cultured at 23 degrees, they reach sterility at about six generations. So we bioinformatically compared the list of genes significantly differentially expressed in both the mute 16 mutants and the HERD1 mutant libraries after culturing um, just prior to sterility. So for our mute 16 mutants, that's the single generation at 25 degrees. And for the HERD1 mutants, that's the sixth generation at 23 degrees. We identified 88 genes that were significantly upregulated during heat stress in both the mute 16 mutant and HERD1 mutant libraries. And interest, interestingly, we found that the genes significantly upregulated in the sterile generation of both of these mutants were predominantly somatic genes, and that these genes were enriched for muscle and neuronal specific genes. Um, surprisingly, the genes significantly upregulated here were not enriched for known RNAi pathway targets, indicating that the heat stress in RNAi pathway mutants causes misregulation of soma specific transcripts in a small RNA independent manner. Previously, it was shown that inappropriate expression of somatic genes occurs in the germline as a result of P granule disruption or loss of translational regulators or chromatin modifying enzymes. And because the in observed increase in expression of some specific genes in our heat stress mute 16 and HERD1 mutants could be occurring in either the somatic tissues or in the germline tissues as these libraries were prepped from whole animals, 
we first sought to determine whether we could observe an increase in soma-specific gene expression in isolated germline tissue. To do this, we isolated RNA from gonad tissue from synchronized adult wild type in mute 16 mutants cultured at 20 and 25 degrees. Um, and again, this is just the distal arm of the gonad, so excluding oocytes and sperm. And we performed qPCR for muscle markers here using RAB3 and Myo3, which were upregulated in our mRNA seq libraries, and a neuronal marker, uh, FA1, which was upregulated in our mRNA seq libraries. Um, we also used PIGL1 as a control for the specificity of our gonad extracted RNA. It should be noted that despite the fact that we see disruption of P granule integrity in our mute 16 mutants grown at 25 degrees, we did not observe a change in PIGL1 expression or the expression of other core P granule components in our mRNA seq libraries um, at all. So we found, uh, strikingly, that the expression of our muscle markers and neuronal markers are significantly and exclusively upregulated in the isolated germline tissue of heat stress mute 16 mutants. And this indicated that germline cells are indeed ectopically expressing somatic transcripts in the heat stress mute 16 mutants. As a complementary approach to the qPCR and to further val validate the ectopic expression of soma genes in the germline of our heat stress mute 16 mutants, we decided to look at a transgene array expressing GFP driven by the promoter of Myo3 at 20 and 25 degrees in wild type and mute 16 mutants. Myo3, which was upregulated in our mRNA-seq data as well as in our qPCR data, is a marker of body wall muscle and is not expressed in the C. elegans gonad under normal conditions. So as expected, wild type animals cultured at 20 and 25 degrees did not express Myo3 GFP within their gonad. Myo3 GFP was also not expressed within the gonad of the mute 16 mutants cultured at permissive temperature. However, it was strongly expressed in the gonad of mute 16 mutants cultured at 25 degrees. And this observation taken together with our qPCR results indicates that mute 16 mutants at elevated temperature are inappropriately expressing soma-specific genes within the gonad tissues, suggesting that the germ cells of these heat stress mute 16 mutants are losing the ability to repress the somatic transcripts and maintain their identity as germ cells. Uh, RNAi can post-transcriptionally regulate mRNAs by cleaving target transcripts or can transcriptionally regulate mRNAs by directing the establishment of repressive chromatin marks such as H3K9 methyl 3 at target loci. And because the majority of our genes that we see upregulated significantly in these heat-stressed RNAi mutants are not known targets of an RNAi pathway, we wanted to determine whether changes in the chromatin structure correlated with increased expression of the somatic genes in the germlines of heat-stressed mute 16 mutants. To do this, we isolated germline nuclei from synchronized adult wild type and mute 16 mutants cultured at 20 and 25 degrees for a single generation and then generated assay for transposase accessible chromatin or attack seq libraries. Um, so in this plot, what we're showing is uh, for all genes in the C. elegans genome, uh, the gene body has been scaled to 5 kb here between the transcription start site and the transcription end site. And then we are showing 2 kb flanking the gene bodies, so upstream and downstream. We have three biological replicants shown for each uh, strain and condition here. So you can see the three bands uh, under each strain and condition. And blue indicates uh, very closed chromatin, while red indicates very accessible chromatin or high accessibility. And so uh, our bioinformatic analysis, when we looked at our ATAC-seq libraries, revealed that there's increased chromatin uh, accessibility globally in the germline and nuclei of heat stress wild type animals compared to wild type animals that were cultured at permissive temperature, here indicated by um, the changes in degree of uh, blueness or tightly packed chromatin. Um, and that this uh, global increase in chromatin accessibility is further exacerbated in heat stress mute 16 mutants compared to the wild type animals grown at permissive or non-permissive temperature or the mute 16 mutants grown at permissive temperature. Next, we looked at the chromatin accessibility of genes that are upregulated exclusively upon heat stress in mute 16 mutants. Um, and we found that, again, there is a 
slight increase in the chromatin accessibility along the bodies of these genes uh, in heat stress wild type animals compared to wild type animals grown at permissive temperature. Um, however, there was a drastic increase in chromatin accessibility along the bodies of these genes in our mute 16 mutants that have experienced heat stress compared to mute 16 mutants grown at permissive temperature or the wild type animals grown at permissive or non-permissive temperature. Um, interestingly, we also found that the bodies, so between the transcription start site and the transcription insight of the genes that are exclusively upregulated in heat stress mute 16 mutants, um, are flanked by regions of accessible chromatin, which we found very interesting and striking. Um, so together, the ATAC seq analyses showed that genes upregulated in heat stress mute 16 mutants exhibit increased chromatin accessibility, um, as well as all genes globally in the germline of the C. elegans, suggesting that the observed changes in expression that we see upon heat stress are due to mute 16 mutant susceptibility to changes in chromatin status. So to quickly recap, uh, RNAi mutants that are cultured at permissive temperature have uh, repression of somatic genes likely through deposition of H3K9 methyl-3. However, when these RNAi mutants are cultured at non-permissive temperature, they are susceptible to changes in um, the accessibility of the chromatin that occurs due to heat stress, resulting in the expression, ectopic expression of these somatic genes within the germline. RNAi mutants cultured at non-permissive temperature as well have disrupted P granule integrity where they either have large aggregates of P granules or lack P granules in their germline nuclei. And the combination of these effects ultimately results in the loss of germ cell identity in these RNAi mutants in their germline at, from the resulting somatic uh, ectopic expression. So for some post-pandemic directions, what we'd like to follow up on with these projects is examining the differences in the paternal effect of mute 16 mutants compared to the maternal effect. So whether or not uh, there are sperm defects that result in the manifestation of the paternal defect after a single generation at heat stress, and whether or not transcriptional changes occur in the male germline during heat stress that are uh, different from the changes that occur in the hermaphroditic germline. We would also like to examine the changes in histone modifications associated with the increased chromatin accessibility upon heat stress. So looking at whether there are changes in active and repressive histone modifications uh, globally and along the genes specifically upregulated in our heat stress mute 16 mutants, um, or whether or not there are upregulated, or these genes are actually experiencing increased active transcription or decreased transcript degradation. Um, ultimately to tease out why these genes that are upregulated specifically in the heat stress mutants um, are actually more susceptible to these changes. And so with that, I'd like to thank the members of the Phillips Lab, especially my PI, um, Carolyn, for allowing me to run with these projects and I'd be happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alicia, for a very nice talk. Um, we already have a couple of questions. Um, so, my first question from Louis Mathieu Harvey um, about transposable elements. Doesn't a, doesn't a mute 16 mutant usually show increased transposable element uh, mRNA TC1 family? What do you think in this case the mRNA level didn't change? Um, so, there are some specific transposon elements um, that are upregulated in our mute 16 mutants. However, we were looking at all transposon mRNAs. I'm going to go back to it um, here, uh, comparing the transposon mRNAs between the wild type animals that were ex grown in permissive temperature compared to non-permissive temperature, and then w the upregulation in the 20 degrees versus the 25 degrees. And we actually looked at, additionally, all the tandem repeats, different repeat maskers, um, and overall, between the mute 16 mutants that are grown at 20 degrees and the ones grown at 25 degrees, there's not a significant difference. And so if we're looking for what is causing the heat stress induced sterility, if it was the transposons, we would see, expect to see an increase, a further exacerbated increase in their expression in the heat stress mute 16 mutants, which we don't see. All right. 
Then second question from uh, Joshua Ribeir. Um, cool talk, the combination of grandmother effect, chromatin P granule, and me thinking MES protein. Do you know if there is a molecular link between MUT16 MUT and MES gene or the other way around? That might explain their shared phenotype. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if there is a link or not. Um, but there might be, so. Okay. <laughs> Um, another question from uh, Taylor medwin Uh Aside from improper expression of somatic genes, did you observe any change in cell morphology or behavior, such as proliferation in the germline? So for the, um, the germlines that we looked at for our crossing schema, we definitely see morphological defects in the germline, um, where these mute 16 mutants and their mothers and grandmothers were experiencing heat stress. So these are very gross morphological defects that ranged either from collapsed germlines uh, to just generally shrunken and disordered germlines. For the mute 16 mutants that are only cultured for one generation, they are slightly smaller and a little bit more disordered, um, but they are able to still produce progeny if mated with wild type sperm. So I think that their defects are not so bad that they're still able to produce viable progeny. Um, of course, it does vary some, and it has been shown before in some RNAi mutants that you see specific cells expressing neuronal or muscle markers. Uh, so like you can see actual differentiated somatics or the beginnings of differentiated somatic cells within these mutes or these germlines. Um, we didn't see specific cells that were expressing one type of marker, but more like a general increase in the uh, expression of the somatic genes within the germline. Mm, okay, all right, thank you. And uh, another question from uh, John Paul Young. Uh, have you tried any suppressor screens to suppress the mute 16 fertility defect? So I have not actually tried any suppressor screens. That would be really interesting to try. And a question from David Brenner. Uh, have you observed any delay in somatic uh, versus germline developmental speed? So not that I've actually quantified. Um, it does seem like mute 16 mutants develop slightly slower in general compared to wild type animals. Um, so the timing on these experiments is very important to make sure that you have adult, actual true adults of each. Um, but I haven't observed specifically within the mute 16 mutant that the germline develops slower than the rest of the adult animal. Okay, 